several days before something strange happens to the building, a sort of liberating madness, a liberation of sociability, students who have spent most of their year huddled in unit hub, darkened corners and one-to-one laptop dialogue suddenly spring to life, out into the corridors, stairways, halls, vestibules of the building. With this comes life and vitality of youth, a fuck-it kind of freedom that has spent most of the year harnessed and closeted from youth behind the keyboard on each unit door. Of course, this final surge is another unit-driven exercise, only this time the boundaries are not drawn so clearly from the start, allowing infectious freedom spills across the borders. Somewhere a plan explaining how approximately 700 students will suddenly spill out their wares in and across the Bedford Square site in unit designation. But ahead of a defining projects review, a rare moment of beautiful chaos occurs, whether anyone is aware of it or not. To begin with, students, giddy from formal completion of term tasks, sprawl around the building, smiling and chatting. Then... Sawing, cutting, singing, drilling, swearing, measuring, shouting, confronting, negotiating, motion, speed, constructing, possibilities, chance happenings, improvisation, cross-pollination, and laughter. Don't forget the laughter. What? Study can be fun? Serious study can also be funny? All this and more takes place and all because for a couple of days the carpet has been pulled from under the feet of an ingrained timetable. Here we see in many a rare glimpse of themselves not something they're trying to be or an image of themselves they're trying to project, just them, pure and simple, untapped potential to take our future elsewhere. Of course, the initial uprooting is soon put in its place as partitions go up, sectioning off open space, lines are drawn between units. My pink half of the drain pipe separates next door from me as order is restored. Some of the chat and laughter remain, but then suddenly that's it. Everything is in its place and everyone is off. The building is empty until everyone turns up next year to repeat it again. It is in those few days of madness that A.A. Lorne detects a chink of light that would allow the other to be given serious voice in the mix, to show the A.A. is still a leader in taking chances and is serious in its often quoted claims to be pushing and challenging the boundaries of architecture. To use the A.A. itself to push the architectural structures of learning. Through the past two years of research, A.A. Lorne have identified three areas of pause in the academic calendar. Winter Open Week, Spring Open Week and Graduation Week. Currently, the potential outcomes indicated above are filled to a great extent with continuing unit crits, tutorials and travelling at a time, as Lorne understands, should be set aside for non-unit work. A.A. Lorne suggests that these times now become dedicated to the development and performance of a cross-school show, a pantomime or review, addressing every aspect of architecture written, built, presented and performed by students and A.A. staff. This would be a constructive contribution to the AA, not only for the well-being of the school community, but also as publicity, communication to the wider world, and for attracting new students who would be offered something completely original as part of their study. The AA has always prided itself on offering something different as a place to study. This event would set the AA apart from any other school in the UK, in showing, while other schools obsess with the minutiae of grading, the AA expands on students' learning through a serious and cross-school presentation, expanding on the broader aspects of architecture, communication and technology.